back on the Miami campus following a year that, in the words of All-America defensive lineman Warren Sapp, was a disaster. You know, just a disaster. You know, just like a nightmare that went in. We deal with so many questions about, you know, Arizona, you know, 9-3. And, and, you know, we're just ready to put that behind us because that was last year and there's nothing we can do about it. We can't bring those Saturdays back and play again. So we're just ready to move on. Sixth-year senior Rusty Medeiros, who missed last year's nightmare with a nightmare of his own, a knee injury, welcomes the notion that Miami has lost its mystique. We love to have for people to tell us that the, the dynasty's over with and uh, we're no longer the Hurricanes because because that's what we thrive on. Now, that's just fuel to our fire. The fire was lit under Frank Costa last spring. Costa won back the starting quarterback job from Ryan Collins, who had started the last seven of Miami's games in 93. Maybe too much of a fire was lit under Costa. He just pleaded no contest to a drunk driving charge, lost his license for six months. At West Virginia, Don Nealon will be hard-pressed to duplicate the achievements of 1993. The 11-0 in the regular season, Big East Conference champions, a home victory versus Miami, a major bowl appearance. Gone are 27 seniors. But 11 starters return, among them Robert Walker, who rushed for 11 touchdowns and nearly 1,200 yards. The Mountaineers have a challenging start to the 94 season. Sunday's meeting with Nebraska in the kickoff classic. But a favorable schedule has the Canes coming to Morgantown for the second consecutive year. The success of Virginia Tech would revolve around the talent of quarterback Maurice DeShazo. The option QB racked up some impressive numbers last year. 2,080 yards passing, 22 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. Fifth in the nation in passing efficiency. A problem for Frank Beamer's Hokies, finding a way to beat the Cane, something Virginia Tech has yet to accomplish in 11 meetings. BC, coming off one of its best years in recent history, faces a season of challenge and change. The biggest change at the head coaching position, where Dan Henning replaces Tom Coughlin. The inevitable comparisons to Coughlin matter little to Henning, who has been out of the college game for 20 years. How uh, they compare me to him and to me, I don't know. I can't worry about that. Let the people, let the comparers compare. I got a coach. The main coaching challenge, finding a replacement, four-year starter Glenn Foley. Will Mark Hartzell look even vaguely like last year's Lone Eagle? Some bright spots, Pete Mitchell, a potential All-America at tight end, led the Big East with 66 receptions last year. And Stephen Boyd is the best linebacker at Chestnut Hill since Bill Romanowski. Henning inherits one of the toughest schedules in the country. An opener at Michigan, home versus Notre Dame, and games on the road at West Virginia and Miami to close the season. Syracuse was one of the major disappointments of the 93 season, going 6-4-1 and, and failing to make a bowl game after six straight years in the postseason. The Orange defense will welcome the return of six-year senior linebacker Dan Conley, who missed last year with an injured right knee. Johnny Majors, in year two of his second stint with the Panthers as head coach, will look to Curtis Martin to pick up where he left off last season, over 1,000 yards and eight TDs. Rutgers is one of the best backfields in the country, and Bruce Presley and Terrell Willis, the 93 freshman of the year, will soon be a household name if he duplicates last year's performance of 2,206 all-purpose yards, breaking Herschel Walker's freshman record. And Temple must improve at quarterback. Last season, Henry Burris and Phil Lang combined to throw 14 interceptions and only six touchdowns. Now, how the pollsters see the five biggest of the Big Easters. Miami a consensus sixth at this point. Then it gets loopy. The coaches have Virginia Tech as high as 19th, but no other Big East team shows up in either top 20. And now, without further ado, the man who really knows what he's talking about, Beano Cook with Chris Myers. Chris? Okay, thanks, Keith. And joining us from his easy chair in Pittsburgh, Beano Cook. I know you're crushed about the baseball strike, Beano, so let's talk some Big East football. And the perception of the conference is Miami and then just everybody else. And kind of, would you say, kind of a down year for Big East football? Yeah, I would say so, uh, Chris. I don't think it's uh, a strong conference as far as 1994 is concerned. Uh, the bottom teams are awful bad, and I think that's how you make a good conference and a bad conference is the second division. Have the Hurricanes lost that, that intimidation factor last year? Everybody said, hey, it was a down year. For them, it was a down year. Yeah, they look. They lost at West Virginia, which finished the regular season with a perfect record. They lost at Florida State, and Florida State won the national title. And in the ball game, they lost to Arizona in the state of Arizona. So basically, they lost three road games to three pretty good teams. It's unbelievable how people got on, down on this program because of one bad year. They would come back again. 
Remember, that 10-year period, they won four national titles, and they played for two other ones. That's going to be hard to duplicate, but Miami will be very good this year. Who do you think will challenge them? If you're going with the Canes to maybe Virginia Tech, a sleeper we hear, what do they have that can uh, keep with Miami? Well, Virginia Tech can move the ball. I think Virginia Tech is one of the three most exciting teams in the country. Really? I think they're going to be quite good. They, however, they have to play Miami at Miami, and Miami hasn't lost... Uh, at home. In fact, they were going to have a reunion of the last team that lost at home, and only two players are alive. I mean, it's, they haven't lost for centuries, it seems. So Virginia Tech will probably lose that game, but Virginia Tech will be good. For West Virginia losing 27 starters, uh, how badly? And, and of course, they, they play Nebraska to get things started on Sunday. They're going to get a good paycheck uh, out of the Nebraska game, and they're going to get a good beating. They're going to win five, six games would be my guess, maybe seven with some luck. Boston College, Rutgers, Syracuse, let's lump them together and tell me where you think those teams, uh, you talk about the, the lower half of the conference, could any of those reach the upper half? Well, Syracuse could. Uh, I think Syracuse will be better this year. Rutgers has problems on defense, and in Boston College, two non-conference games where they have very little chance at Michigan and Notre Dame, although that's, it's at Boston College. Notre Dame remembers the defeat last year. It's going to be a rough year for Boston College. How about Johnny Majors at Pitt? Uh, he's done it there before. Can, can he do it again? He's got quite a rebuilding job ahead of him. Yeah, the, the Pitt team will be better, but at the most, four wins at the very most. It's uh, a very tough schedule. They have Texas and Ohio State in September. Uh, the, the Pitt faculty, the Pitt athletic department, made a bad mistake five years ago when Dr. Posbar, then the chancellor, fired Mike Godfrey as head coach. It's one of the dumbest things I've ever seen made by a by a university it was just plain stupid. Temple has, uh, has never won a, a conference game, thought of as a, as a basketball school. What will it take uh, for them to turn things around, win a conference game, get a little respect in the football area? A lot of luck and better recruiting. Uh, my feeling is, and it's only my feeling, if Temple is unable to compete inside a few years, they might consider dropping football. They're going to finish last again. Uh, it's very difficult uh, for a team like Temple to get in there and compete in the first division in this conference, and I don't know if it can be done in the next five or ten years. All right, thank you very much, Pino Cook from Pittsburgh. Look forward to talking to you uh, throughout the college football season here on ESPN. So it looks like Miami Virginia Tech, in his opinion, in what is a down year, considered to be a down year for Big East football. Football. Third rank Nebraska waking up the echoes. Taking on West Virginia and the Huskers were hot in the kickoff classic. Tommy Frazier and Cope pitch a 31-0 shutout at the Mountaineers. Frazier staked an early claim to the Heisman. He ran rough shot over West Virginia. Frazier scored from 25, 27, and 42 yards out. Touchdown Tommy also threw a 12-yarder. His numbers, 130 yards on the ground and 100 through the air. Decimated by graduation, West Virginia was dominated on the field, gaining just 89 total yards.